Andrea, it's a rare opportunity for me to speak about a destination that's not so well known. <clears throat> it's described as majestic and untrammeled and offering raw adventure and a best kept secret. Yes. What are we talking about? Guyana. <laughs> so it where is, is <laughs> where in Africa is Guyana? <laughs> well, we affectionately say that Guyana sits on the shoulder of South America. Right. So it has some Caribbean influence and a lot of South American influence. Right. And mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't really know much about it. No, which is it's the one of as you said one of the best kept secrets. So um, you know, we have about 740, 750,000 people mm -hmm. in the entire country. Wow. <laughs> and 95% of them live on the coast. Right. So once you leave the coast and you fly into the interior to any of the eco lodges or the community owned and run properties, um, you can go for miles and miles and miles without seeing people. Right. Um, when we flew in uh, just just the other day where there was a young six-year-old daughter of a friend of ours and she said, Auntie, look out the window and see all the fields of broccoli. <laughs> well, the broccoli was the rainforest. Right. <laughs> and that's exactly what it looks like. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's not a small place. No. <clears throat> it's, no. Uh, I think maybe you could fit four of them in Ontario, but Ontario is <laughs> a very big place. Yeah, um, we, we do say, we, actually, I, I'm originally from the, from the States. So I say that, you know, Guyana could fit in the tri-state area, you know, New York, right. New Jersey, and, and Connecticut. Right. <laughs> so what, uh, historically, tourism hasn't been a huge part of, of your country. No. What's changing, and, and what are you excited well, about? Well, um, tourism has been around in, in Guyana for 20, 25 years. In fact, the managing director of, of the company that I am the general manager for, which is Wilderness Explorers, our managing director, Tony Thorne, is a real visionary, and he saw an opportunity um, to create an industry where there wasn't one and create jobs where there weren't before. Um, and slowly, this has been developing. But in the past three to five years, I would say, you know, since the oil find and ExxonMobil coming, mm. a lot of attention has been put on Guyana right. um, and building the infrastructure and developing tourism for many reasons. We, we, you, you open the New York Times now and, and you see Guyana almost every day mm. because of the oil find. So people are saying, right. what part of Africa right. <laughs> is right. Guyana? Um, and also we have a lot of expats in country who want to do things as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So one thing about sort of a, an undiscovered country is they're often halfway around the world. Yes. Um, they speak a completely different language. Things are a little bit different in Guyana because yes. it's not that far by plane. Nope. And English is... is English the is, is the national language. I mean, it is the only country in South America where we speak English. Right. I mean, and not as a, a second language. Mm -hmm. um, and the flights, you know, currently you can go direct on Caribbean Air from Toronto. You right. can go um, on American to Miami and then Miami on, on to, to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And then um, in December, American will be flying out of New York, JFK, directly. And right. we understand that JetBlue will be starting next year. Wow. And um, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's really the, to, to be able to have the accessibility and the flights right. will, will allow more people to come. Right. And I know there's no such thing as a typical trip to Guyana, but what are some of the reasons why people come? Well, because, you know, if you go on an African safari and you see some great cat, Somebody's going to get on a walkie-talkie, and the next thing you know, they're going to be 15 vehicles because everybody's going to want to see it. But when you get to Guyana, if you go into the interior and perhaps you're in search of a giant anteater, there's a really, really, really good chance you'll see one. Mm -hmm. And you'll be the only group there. Right. Nobody else is coming. It is really, when they use the word pristine or they talk about it being untouched, it truly is, mm -hmm. and there are very few places that you have that opportunity, right. you know, where you can get in a boat and go on the river and maybe pass one fisherman <laughs> on your way to your destination. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's an exceptional opportunity. Right. Starting tourism sort of late, later, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, offers some opportunities as well for sustainability. Yes. 
and for actually benefiting the people who live there. And I think mm -hmm. that's really part of the ethos of, of what... It is. There, there are a couple of things. One is that we don't have to recreate the wheel. We can learn from best practices mm -hmm. from our neighbors. Um, for people who have made mistakes and learned how to do it right, we don't have to make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a huge advantage. One of our major points of difference uh, and something that we, we all work together on is this community owned and run tourism. It's a, a point of difference for us because in many countries when you have community tourism you have an individual who develops a lodge, who invests and hires people from the community. But in Guyana, the community owned and run tourism is the village. The village owns the business. Mm. So the village council sort of serves as the board of directors. And everything is done through consultation. Um, so to have a community own a lodge and own a tourism business means that everybody in the community has the opportunity for employment. Mm -hmm. They tend to work one month on and one month off so that everybody has a chance to work. Mm. You have um, direct benefits and indirect benefits. So direct benefits would be the people who are on salary, mm -hmm. people who are um, the managers and the cooks and the guides. Then indirect benefits are the people like the fishermen who catch the fish and right. bring the fish to the lodge and sell them. Um, when this becomes a community business, everybody is involved. Mm -hmm. And one of our, our um, lodges, which is Rewa Eco Lodge, when your boat pulls up there, everybody comes to the landing and you'll hear everybody say, you are welcome. And that's what they really mean. You mm -hmm. are, you're welcome. You're welcome to visit. We're right. so happy you are here because by you coming to Rewa Eco Lodge, you are providing jobs that were not there before. Right. You're providing income to a community. And otherwise these guys would have had to go to the gold bush or go into timber or something else in order to make an income. Right, interesting. Tell me about, uh, you know, tourism's kind of hungry and thirsty work. Is there, uh, what about food and, and drink uh, in Guyana? There is nothing like food in Guyana. Because you have so many different races and so many different cultures, there is a blend. Um, you, everybody eats everything, <laughs> which is just fantastic. We mm. do some culinary tours that are pretty uh, spectacular where um, we have a, a dear friend who is a chef. His name is Delvin Adams, and um, he runs Backyard Cafe. Mm. And he will take your hand and invite you to be Guyanese for, for a day and take you to the market and go shopping for items that you've never seen before, you know. What do I do with that? Oh, well, let's buy it and see. Right. You know, take you to the fish market and pick a fish that perhaps looks very different to you. Mm -hmm. And he'll show you how to prepare it and take you back to his home and to his backyard and, and cook together and share this amazing meal. It's a wonderful experience. But in Guyana, everybody eats curry. Mm -hmm. Everybody eats Chinese. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes to the market and, and buys things fresh every day. Um, it's a wonderful fusion of cuisines and of cultures. Wow. Sounds amazing. <laughs> it is. Tell me a little bit before we go, you, you have a dual role. I do. You're in the private sector and the public sector. I am. Tell, tell me about that. So as I mentioned before, I have uh, the great good fortune of being the general manager of Wilderness Explorers, which was a company that was a pioneer in tourism in Guyana. Mm -hmm. And I also sit as vice chair of the Guyana Tourism Authority Board of Directors. Um, we really have a commitment, private sector and public sector, to working together to make sure that best practices are, are learned and observed and that we work together. With this great oil find, our commitment is to conservation and protecting not just the rainforest and the savanna, but the culture and the people um, and the heritage while um, we're sort of balancing, you know, the oil find and, right. and the development of the country. It all sounds <clears throat> wonderful. Well, you'll have I've, to I've come. <laughs> added something to my bucket list, drinking uh, some rum with Salvador, I believe would be uh, Yes, it's definitely a five-star experience. Thank you so much for, <laughs> Thank you. for speaking with us today.